Hi, everyone. Welcome to our live webinar, Best Practices for Delivery Success, Applying Data and Automation for Seamless Operations. I'm Zahava, and I'm joined by Ben Fleming, VP Sales, who will be leading the webinar today. Uh, before we begin, in case anyone was wondering if you have to leave early, we will be sending a recording of the webinar to all the registrants afterwards. Also, during the webinar, you can ask questions via the question box you see on your screen. And at the end of the webinar, we should have time to get to some of your questions, hopefully as many as possible. Uh, ben, over to you. Great, thank you, Zahava. Um, thank you all for, for joining. Uh, for those of you who are not too familiar with Brain, uh, we're a, a logistics technology company and we do a lot of work in the restaurant space. Um, we also do a lot of work um, in, in other verticals, in retail, auto parts, uh, services, logistics, um, and, and we work across the globe. And what this allows us to do and has given us the opportunity to do is, is see inside and kind of under the hood of delivery operations uh, for the last mile of, of all sorts um, in, in all different types of places and, and really kind of given us a, a nice perspective on, on what works and what doesn't work. And the one thing that we've started to realize uh, pretty clearly over the past several months here is that uh, really the, the secret sauce, uh, if there is one for delivery success, is data. Um, and not just having data, uh, but being able to uh, utilize that data and, and apply rules uh, and, and capabilities with that, with that data and, and to analyze that data and make adjustments to delivery operations. So this is a real uh, key finding for us uh, over the past few months uh, as we started to work with more and more uh, tier one enterprise uh, clients around the world. Um, and you know, to, to highlight the importance of data um, and kind of the general lack, I must say, of, of data across most delivery operations, uh, I want to start this, this webinar, this session, by, by asking just a, a few uh, rhetorical questions. Um, one second here. The first question is, do you know what the average delivery time is once an order is placed on your website or, or call center uh, to the time that it's actually delivered? Do you have this data? Another data point, another question is, what's the average cost uh, for each delivery that you make uh, to the penny? Do you know Do you know what that is? Do you know what the average cost is? Do you know um, what different types of deliveries, uh, what, what they cost to this level of detail. And then the third one is, the third question is, how happy are your customers with your deliveries? Right, so these are really, really important questions. Um, very few uh, people that, that we engage with, that we work with, um, actually have answers to these questions. And uh, it's, it's really telling, it's really eye-opening when, when you see brands that are not able to answer these questions. And especially important um, uh, when we're talking about being in the age of Amazon. Right? And whether we like it or not, um, we are in the age of Amazon. Uh, it's not going away. Customers' expectations have changed so dramatically. And you need to be able to answer these questions. And you need to be able to have the data that allows you to answer these questions um, so that you can create for your customers the experience that they, that they, that they expect, frankly. Uh, so today, again, whether we like it or not, customers, and, and when I say customers, um, I'm not talking just in general about your customers. Um, I'm talking about us. Uh, you know, we're all customers as well. But you think about how you, you buy today. And because of Amazon, um, you expect a, a, a really seamless experience. You know, you go to a website, you order, it's very easy. You have delivery options and it gets delivered to you. Um, they expect transparency, right? The ability to see where their delivery is. Um, in some cases, even to, to get transparency into the, the supply chain and where their food was sourced from. Uh, more control, right? So the ability to um, have their food delivered to them or, or any item delivered to them when and where they want it, uh, and, and the convenience that comes along with that. These are the expectations. This is kind of the, um, uh, this, is, this is the world, the dynamic that we're operating in today. Um, and we call it the, the Amazon effect. Uh, and because of that, businesses need more. 
right? In order for your business to meet these expectations that your customers and we all have as consumers, uh, your business needs a lot more. It used to be that all you needed was a cash register or POS that can collect cash and, and keep track of, of how much money you're making for customers coming into your store. Well, now customers are expecting delivery. Um, we're doing, we're working with a lot of different vendors and, and new modes of operation. Um, you need more delivery options. And maybe it's not just enough to have a guy on a bike or just to work with Uber Eats uh, and just have one delivery partner. You need multiple delivery options. Um, you may need more coverage, uh, geographical coverage uh, in different cities where you're operating that might be uh, secondary tertiary markets where you can't hire drivers. Um, or there are no third-party delivery services um, uh, in, in those specific areas, or, or even coverage during peak times, right? Ebbs and flows of the day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, uh, different times of the day, you need different delivery coverage. Uh, you need more optimized business business models, more efficient business models. We're, we're also in an age now of, of eroding margins, particularly in the restaurant space. Labor costs are going up significantly. Um, Third-party delivery services that we're relying on more and more are, are, are deeply cutting into our margins. Uh, and so there's real need to find efficiencies um, in, in, the, in the delivery uh, um, modes. And then more time, more real-time visibility. Again, as we're working with more vendors and we're outsourcing a lot of our uh, core capabilities to Uber Eats and the DoorDashes and the Grubhubs of the world, um, you know, we, we lose a lot of visibility. And this gets back to the idea of how important data is. Without that visibility, without knowing what's going on in your operations uh, in real time, it's very hard to control uh, and, 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 uh, and have success in delivery. Now, you might say, hey, you know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not competing with Amazon directly. Um, yeah, customer expectations have changed, but, you know, we're in the restaurant space and, and Amazon doesn't, you know, they're, they're, they're not really a competitor of mine. Well, um, Domino's, Jimmy John's, and Panera certainly are. Um, and these are brands that have really, especially over the past few years, uh, taken on the challenge of, of the Amazon effect and have really been able to deliver against what customers expect. Um, Domino's, um, very consistent, very controllable experience. You know what you're gonna get. No matter where you are, you're gonna get the same thing. You're gonna get it fast. Jimmy John's, freaky fast, right? As they say, it actually is freaky fast. I ordered the other day and the food was delivered. You know, it, it seemed like I had just completed my order and it got delivered. Uh, and then Panera, as you're all aware, Panera went out and um, took an unprecedented move a couple of years ago. They said, you know what? This is too important. We're going to build our own delivery so, uh, uh, operations. We're going to own it ourselves. They hired over 10,000 drivers. Um, everyone in the industry said it was crazy, uh, both overtly and, you know, behind the scenes, everyone, you know, chitter chattering about how crazy Panera is. The fact of the matter is that they're crushing it right now, right? They're doing a uh, billion dollars in incremental revenue uh, just, just from delivery, right? So that, that is success. They've succeeded and are succeeding in the Amazon um, world. Uh, so what, what is the one, what's the commonality for all of these guys that are succeeding in the Amazon world? Um, what, what do they have in common with Amazon? and, and and what's the key to their success? Well, again, back to my opening statement, uh, data is really the key to their success. If we distill it all down, the one thing that all of these players have and Amazon have is they have data, then they utilize data and they analyze data. Um, you know, Domino's, Jimmy John's and Panera, they have the luxury of um, owning their delivery operations. They own their own drivers, their own employees. Um, so they're able to really capture and own all that data. And, and all the orders are, are, for the most part, coming through their own uh, ecosystem, their own e-commerce. So they really do have ownership of all of that data, um, and, and it really helps them. Amazon, now they don't have um, employees uh, going out and doing delivery by and large. Uh, they're using many, many third-party delivery services of all types, but they have data. They capture, they measure the heck out of every point of data. They, they enforce that the delivery providers, providers that they work with provide them with uh, insane amounts of data. Um, and they're very particular about it. Uh, and because of that, they, like Domino's and Jerry Johns and, and Panera, have control over their delivery ecosystem um, and, and they can really manage it. So data is, as we found, like the key to delivery success. Now, of course, you know, data is just data, <laughs> it's just numbers. Um, 
The real challenge is, well, A, collecting that data. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but it's a real challenge, especially if you're not using um, your own delivery fleet. Um, if you're using third parties or multiple third parties, it's a real challenge. Um, the other challenge is um, the application of that data. So again, data is just data, it's just numbers. It's what you do with that data. How do you use that data to make real-time decisions to impact what your third-party delivery uh, services are doing, to impact how your, your kitchens are operating? Um, how do you use that data uh, to project trends um, uh, and, to, and to make changes to your, to, your, to your business, right? The great thing that, that Amazon does, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, and Uber does this too, they're constantly testing and changing. They're using data to see how things are going, they're making adjustments, they're measuring, they're adjusting, they're measuring, they're adjusting. Um, and, and that's that's a very important um, aspect to their success, but they need data as the foundation there. So, you know, the, the real challenge for, for many of you um, that are probably listening in, uh, in the restaurant space is, you know, the use of, of third-party delivery services. And, and many of you are also using third-party e-commerce providers and third-party POSs. Um, so this is data that's kind of all over the place. And you're really trying to corral that and get it into one place is, is very challenging. Um, but it, it's something that needs to be addressed. The idea of outsourcing various parts of your business and kind of letting these bits of data go away and being okay with that is not okay. Um, it, it really needs to change. You really need to, to grab control of that. It's foundational um, for, for what, what you're trying to do and be successful in the delivery space. And, and just to give an example of what I mean by this, um, this is a flow uh, or a diagram of a typical flow for a restaurant brand that's using primarily third-party delivery. And you can see, you know, if you think of this as a, as a data funnel where, you know, the order is placed on the top left here on the aggregator's website. Um, and throughout this whole process, before we get to the customer, you've lost almost all of the data. It's, it's gone to your customer, or it's, it's gone to your, your delivery provider, or it's just, it's just gone. Um, so an order comes in uh, through the aggregator's website. They send you the order details, probably not much customer data, right? Um, you, you know, prepare that meal and you pack it, basically pick and pack that meal for them. So uh, one of their drivers shows up, they pick up the food. You really have no idea how long they were staying in the store, clogging up your line, how long they were waiting. Um, was that food, did it get cold while they were waiting? You really don't have that data because it's just some guy coming in with a, uh, you know, a, a, a branded uh, logo on his t-shirt. It's, it's not your brand. Uh, he's picking up the food uh, and he's delivering it to the customer. You really have no idea when it actually got to that customer. So you're losing all of that data too. You don't know how long that food's been in transit. And at the end of the day, the third party's probably collecting information from the customer about whether they were uh, happy or not with their, you know, were they satisfied with their, with their order. Um, they're probably not passing that back to you. So again, you don't know how your customer you're losing this data. You don't know how your customer uh, is feeling about the food that, they, that you just prepared for them. Um, at the end of the day, this is, like it or not, um, and whether the third party delivery services agree or not, this is your customer. He just ate your food. Um, and to not know how he feels about your food um, is, is um, it makes it very challenging for you to improve your, your operations. So anyways, the, the point here is the importance of data and, and how quickly and how easily we we uh, we lose all the data is really critical to, to having a successful delivery operation. So let, let's move on a little bit and um, talk about what a successful end-to-end -end strategy looks like. Uh, assuming that you you did have access to all this data and the data was freely flowing across all of the various vendors and systems that you have, and you were able to manipulate that data and use it as signals, uh, you know, from one system to another system, uh, from one vendor to another, you were know, able to, to take advantage of this data and you were able to measure this data and make ch changes to your operations. Let's talk about what an end-to-end -end strategy would look like and the, and the capabilities that you could enable and how powerful those are. Um, and, and by the way, I'm going to go through a couple of, um, of capabilities here that, that you know, express uh, how you could use data. These are not 
things that I made up. These are things that are actually being used in the field um, by our customers and, and other customers as, as well, or, or other folks that are not our clients as well. These are real world examples. Um, so the, the fact is that there is a lot of data in a delivery operation. Now it might be all over the place, but it's a very rich ecosystem in terms of data. If we look at, um, and, and these are, you know, most of the, the players, right? You have the fleets. So whether it's your own drivers or it's third party drivers, there's a driver out there making the delivery. You have your customers, again, your customer, third party customer, you know, we, it's a customer, it's a hungry customer, they're eating your food. Uh, we have order information that might be coming from your, uh, your e-commerce or from the aggregators website um, or from a call center. Um, or an order management system that you have. Um, you have kitchen prep and capacity data somewhere, um, most likely, of uh, you know, what, is, what does your inventory look like right now? Uh, what capacity is your kitchen running at right now? Um, uh, you know, things, things like that. So, so that that's could be a pretty rich data source to, to impact your, your delivery operations. Uh, and then restaurant data. Um, Things like understanding, uh, you know, data around uh, how how busy your your restaurant is right now, um, what the open hours are, even you know, things as simple as that. So there's a lot of data. There's, it's just a matter of, of pulling it all together. And if you could, here's some some things that you could do. Um, you would be able to provide um, accurate ETAs. Right. So one of the really important ways uh, to reduce stress for a customer to give them the Amazon experience is to, and they expect this, is to tell them, when is your food going to get ready? If it's in 15 minutes, let me know. If it's going to be in an hour and 45 minutes, just let me know. And let me make a decision on whether I want to order or not. Uh, but that's really important. It's really hard to do this without data. Um, but once you have data flowing between systems and you know where your drivers are, you know where the third party uh, fleets are and when they're going to arrive, you know what your kitchen capacity is. Um, you can you can start to really put together uh, again using the right tools and the right um, the right rules engines uh, to to uh, to manipulate this data and, and, and leverage this data. You can really start to provide your customers with accurate ETA, and this is a very important uh, capability. Um, Leveraging your restaurant infrastructure is another thing that you could do, right? Again, there's data coming from all various places, but if you could, uh, you know, if your e-commerce could talk to your, um, your, 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 your restaurants and can talk to your kitchen prep um, and can talk to your fleets, you can start to uh, recognize when a restaurant is, uh, is over capacity, right? For customers placing an order online, and you recognize that the closest store to them is, uh, is over capacity right now, or you can even project that, hey, by the time this guy completes his order or we're gonna be preparing his order in seven minutes, this is when we really hit our peak time. You can start to recognize that. Maybe you kick that over, uh, that order over to, uh, to another restaurant nearby that has drivers available that can fulfill. So these are all data points that you need to know in order to leverage that restaurant infrastructure and make good decisions. Um, Another capability that you can do, and, and this is really around uh, driving efficiency with data, is automatically dispatching orders. So um, again, if you know where the drivers are, if you have that data point, uh, you know what they're doing, uh, you know where the customers are, you know what they've ordered, um, you can then apply rules to that data, right? An, an algorithm, uh, and automatically dispatch your drivers uh, in an efficient way. Another capability um, is real-time tracking. Again, assuming that you have data of where the drivers are, um, you know where the drivers are, you're tracking them via GPS, um, you know where the customer is, why not share that with the customer? Share that data with the customer. Again, this goes back, this is, this is you know, kind of the, the first example I gave here was providing ETAs. This takes it one step further. This is the Uber uh, experience, telling your customers, um, in real time, hey, you know, we said it was going to be nine minutes, but now you can see that this this ETA it's actually creeping up to twelve minutes. You can see that the guy's probably sitting in traffic, reduces stress quite a bit, right? Um, and and again, this is customers are expecting this. Um, 
and they're expecting it from from you. Right? You're you're the brand. You're the one that's that's getting the food to them. You're the one that's made the food for them. Um, you're the brand that they're familiar with. Now, an interesting point on this one, uh, and just to to show like how important this this Amazon effect is and customer expectations. Uh, you know, I had a a conversation with one of the the, the, the big three pizza chains uh, chief digital officer about a year and a half ago, maybe a year ago, um, where he. You know, I, I showed him what tracking could look like. I showed him a screen like this, and he basically laughed at me and said, yeah, we could do that, but we would never do that. Like, we, why would we do that? That's stupid. Um, and they just announced you know, over the last couple of weeks that they're, they're, they're doing this, right? They're sharing GPS, real-time location. They're starting to roll this out and we've been piloted, right? So, so things change. It's a very dynamic environment. What might have seemed silly or impossible a year ago um, Amazon is just pushing customer expectations so fast uh, that you really need to keep an eye on these trends um, and, and understand what your customers uh, expect. Right? Not, not what you can do or what you should do, what do your customers expect? All right. Another example of uh, a capability, uh, again, going back to uh, driving efficiencies, right? Margins are getting lower. We're really trying to squeeze efficiency. How do we do that with data? One of the ways you can do that um, is to optimize driver efficiency. So you're paying these drivers. If you have your own drivers, you're, you're, you're paying them. Um, uh, and, and at the end of the day, your, your customers are expecting a speedy delivery. So you really want to optimize those, um, uh, your, your drivers, whether it's to reduce costs for yourself or it's to increase speed um, and, and food quality for your, your customers. Uh, if you have the right data, you know, you can you can dispatch to to your own drivers um, in a way that, um, uh, that that reduces the time on the road. You can create routes for them. You can tell them you can batch orders together that are going to a similar place, so that you're not using two drivers to deliver two orders that are going basically right next door to each other. And you can do that automatically, so that you don't have to have someone in the kitchen or someone at the uh, near the front desk deciding which driver is going to get what or allowing your drivers to do that because they might have local knowledge of the roads and all this um but they they don't have full visibility into you know traffic data right now um into what orders what other orders are getting fired into the kitchen right now right so i might want to i might want to hold for a second and wait for that next item to be fired um or these the, the next order to be packed uh, before i run out the door quickly with just one order it's, these are things that you can do with your batch orders. Um, maybe you even have, uh, if, you're, if your drivers are not available right now, um, you know, you might even want to use data to say, hey, you know what, I don't have any drivers available. Um, let's, let's find a third party that can do this for me right now. It might cost a little bit more, but we have rules that say, um, you know, customer uh, SLA, getting, getting food to someone in 30 minutes, is is more important than uh, increasing my cost a little bit on this delivery. Uh, but these are rules that you can you can you can play around with, uh, but you can't do that if you don't have data. And then the final uh, capability um, around these customer expectations uh, and efficiency is is giving your customer a voice. So uh, again, it's really important to understand what that customer's experience has been um, to send out food to someone, whether it's you're sending it out or someone else is sending it out and delivering it for you, to not know if that customer was happy with the food that they just put in their mouth that you cooked for them um, it is not a recipe for success. Um, it's very important to get the customer's voice, to get, their, um, get the feedback from them and to get it in real time. So that, again, if you have this data and you're able to apply rules and react to that data. So if you can get the data that a customer was not happy right now, that right? customer just got his food, he just said that he had a problem, and, you know, he gave you a low rating, let's catch him before he puts, uh, puts something on Twitter, right? About the disgusting food that he just got, right? Or about the horrible delivery experience he got. Let's proactively reach out to that customer. Let's use that data to, to take an action and, and solve a problem before it becomes a bigger problem. Um, let's send that customer a coupon automatically. These, again, are things that you can do once you have the data. The, the, the final thing I want to talk about here around data is, um, you know, kind of a byproduct of collecting all this data and having all this data um, is that you can really, you can, you can use it to make uh, data-driven uh, insights or to, 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 to analyze and, and, and develop uh, data-driven insights. 
right? So imagine having all this data uh, all in one place and imagine being able to really view in real time the health of your delivery business. Now, in general, I would say just from my, my travels and, and working with a lot of folks, delivery specifically in the restaurant space is one of the last kind of bastions of unmeasured um, uh, and, and unanalyzed um, uh, data in, in, in as far as operations go, right? Oftentimes, food's prepared, it's out the door, black box. No one knows where it is. Customer doesn't know where it is. You don't know where it is. You don't know how long it took to get there. Um, you don't know how your delivery partners are, 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 are operating, they're all providing data in different ways. Uh, imagine having all that data in one place, in a dashboard, on a device, whatever it looks like, but being able to really measure over time. Like, what's the on, what's the on, on time uh, uh, percentage right now? Are you hitting your KPIs in real time? Um, are your delivery partners performing? Are some of your delivery partners spending an average of four and a half minutes standing at your stores? Like that's a problem that you need to know and so that you can address it. And if you don't know, you can't address it and your, your delivery uh, operations are not going to be a success. Uh, so data, obviously, I've said the word a million times in this, in this presentation, uh, very important. Um, I just want to go real quickly through a, uh, a a full real world scenario from, from one of our clients who are working with a, a large burger chain, they're working with their, their Latin American uh, operations or, or franchisee. Um, and they had quite a mess on their hands, right? They were doing some of their own delivery and they worked about in about 12 different markets across Latin America. Um, they had one POS, they had their own e-commerce um, that was actually developed by a, a third party. Um, but they also worked with multiple delivery services, um, some aggregators, some marketplaces, some delivery only services. They had data coming in from all over the place. They had tablets all over the, all over the, uh, the counter, uh, like these poor teenagers working at the counter. You know, they're trying to work with POS and five different tablets during lunchtime. Um, so they, they, they had a mess with data coming in from all over the place and they, they had no control. Uh, so what we were able to do is, is take our platform um, but a platform uh, layering on top of uh, on top of their POS and their their their, their kitchen operations and, and systems, um, and really act as a hub. Right. So all orders came into one single place. Bring in this case, we pushed it into the POS. Um, we acted as um, uh, as as traffic cop really for you know we looked at each order and said where what was the source, where is it going. Um, and which, which fleet should take it, should a, a, one of our clients, uh, drivers take it, should, um, should one of their delivery only service providers uh, provide, uh, do the delivery, or should, you know, um, Uber Eats take it because they sourced it, right? So we act as traffic cop, um, and then we also measure, right? We, we, we pulled information back from, in real time, from those delivery services and from their own drivers, uh, and, and we're able to have all that information in one place. Uh, we were able to provide customers with a, a, a customer survey as soon as the order was, was finished. We were able to track when the drivers arrived at the customer. So all of this data was in, in one place um, and, and it was actually a, a, a very big success. The plan was to roll this out before uh, the World Cup. Uh, because they had all this data and they had control, they were able to, to, to fully roll this out um, in, uh, you know, before the World Cup in about, in about three and a half months, right? So this, this is a big data success story. So to, to wrap things up, uh, at the end of the day, this is your business. Uh, it's your brand, uh, whether the, the orders are coming from, from your website or from a third party, it's your brand, uh, and it's your livelihood, right? Um, we see how many, uh, you know, with the devastation that Amazon has caused in the retail space. Right? It's not just Amazon, it's the Amazon expectations and brands that couldn't keep up with that. So this is your livelihood. Right? This, is, this couldn't be more important getting this right. Uh, so you know, I, I implore you, um, I, I, I nudge you, I, I hope for you that you can take control of your data, uh, that you can get the data that you need from your vendors and from all the various systems that you're using. Um, I hope that you can force your technology partners to be open and flexible with the data that they have and allow it to flow seamlessly throughout your ecosystem. Uh, and I want you to use this data, uh, apply rules to it, analyze it, 
analyze it deeply, review it often, make adjustments. Um, and if you do this, you're going to win. Um, you, you will succeed and you will thrive in the Amazon, uh, in the Amazon age. So uh, thank you for, for joining. I think we're going to move to questions now. Thanks, Ben. Uh, we have time for a couple of questions. So the first one is, uh, have you seen a different success rate between companies working with in-house drivers versus third-party providers? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen success in both. Um, I think, and I touched upon this a little bit in the earlier slides here, um, I, I've seen the real glowing successes um, among those who, who've done it on their own. Um, that's a big investment. Um, it's not for everyone, I would say, um, for various reasons. Um, but, but I've personally seen the most success where, um, where, where brands do the delivery themselves. Okay, and uh, we'll just get to one more question. How would data help restaurants cut down on kitchen chaos? On kitchen what? I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. Uh, on how would re how would data help restaurants cut down on kitchen chaos? On kitchen chaos. Oh, um, well, in terms of delivery, I mean, one of the one of the one of the points of chaos that, that I've seen a lot is, uh, and I've seen it personally, and I've seen it while on site um, at various customers, is uh, you know you're waiting in line at lunch, and there's there's seven um, delivery partners, drivers standing there waiting for the orders to come up, right? And they're mixed in with with the other customers, so so that that causes a lot of chaos. Um, one of the ways to use data for that um, is to, and, and I've seen this, you know, connecting the kitchen the, the the prep system or the KBS, the, the kitchen line um, with the uh, with the delivery providers, right? So if you can know where those drivers are, you know, you know that the Uber driver is seven minutes out. Um, you know that it takes three minutes to prep fries and, and a double cheeseburger. Um, why wait until that driver gets in to the store in order to prep it? Why not fire that back to the kitchen three minutes before the driver's going to be in, or four minutes, give yourself a buffer five minutes before the driver's going to get into the store. Um, so that's an example of taking data from your kitchen, taking data from a vendor, using rules to, 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 um, uh, to apply to that data uh, and, and reducing chaos. Great. Thank you, Ben. To everyone who's joining in, I hope you found this webinar useful. Uh, if you'd like to get more insights into delivery solutions for restaurants, you can go to bring.com. And also, if you're interested, you can opt into our newsletter. That's where we provide news about upcoming webinars, industry news, and the latest studies that we publish. Uh, in a minute, you'll be prompted to answer a few short survey questions. This is just a way for us to understand uh, if the information that we provided uh, was valuable and uh, give us uh, tips on how we can improve. So thank you very much, and have a great day.